Hi there. This is me, playing the very same guitar that you're going to see being worked on in this video. If you like the distinctive look of that abalone shell decoration, stick around and I'll show you how it was done. I've used this material on several of the guitars I've built recently, and you can use the same methods I'm going to show you for adding a mother of pearl or abalone feature to virtually any woodworking project, whether it's a flat surface like the headstock of my guitar or the lid of a jewellery box, say, or something with a more complex curved surface like my guitar bodies. Now it looks like inlay, right? But in fact, this is not inlay at all. It's a 0.15mm thin veneer sheet, either of mother of pearl or abalone. That's exactly the same material as used for typical shell inlays, but much thinner and therefore easier to work with. You can buy shell veneer sheets like these on Amazon, eBay and other places on the web. I prefer to use sheets without adhesive backing. You can buy it pre-coated, but I prefer uncoated because it's easier and more forgiving to slide around and glue down exactly where you want it to go, as you will see. Let's get started by reviewing the stuff that you're going to need. Of course you'll need the veneer sheets, but in addition you will need white painter's masking tape. Make sure it's stuff that you can write on with pencil, not too waxy. Next you're going to need these three things, again from Amazon. On the left we have normal, very runny super glue, and you're going to need a lot of it, so I suggest you buy it by the pint, which also comes with a handy little bottle dispenser. In the middle we have medium thick super glue, which is a lot more gloopy, and on the right Here's the really important stuff, the accelerator. As you will see in a minute, this is absolutely magic stuff. It comes with a small pump action aerosol, but sometimes I use a little kiddies paintbrush to apply it, so get some of those whilst you're at the store. Now super glue and particularly accelerator are very nasty chemicals, and unless you're only doing very small pieces of art, I really strongly recommend you get a good face mask like this one, capable of blocking organic vapors. Even with the mask, you will need to be working where there's plenty of airflow, so outside or in the garage with the door open. Now in addition to the gas mask, I also religiously use dust masks when I'm doing any sanding work. Something like the 3M type shown here. Definitely get ones with an air valve. Don't mess about with the cheaper ones. You'll need various grades of sandpaper from maybe 150 grade up to about 400 grade and maybe 1000 grade for the final finishing. And you're gonna need tracing paper, carbon paper, razor blades, a fine pencil in an eraser and a knife as well. Get several pairs of reasonably thin latex gloves or similar, and also snag a box of cling wrap from the kitchen. A few elastic bands come in useful also. Okay, here's the patient ready for treatment. You can see it already has some darker mahogany beading work, and this really is inlay. In fact, it's part of my guitar structure, and we're gonna be working alongside that. Now you can see the guitar already has a sheen to it because I've already given it a coat of thin super glue and then a second coat of the thicker glue before doing anything with the veneers. This is very important because it gives you a base to be working on so that you don't get variations in shade between areas that have glue and areas that don't. You'll see how to apply this later, but for now, we're just giving it a light sanding and then a dust off to get ready for the veneer application. Right, I'm going to start by tracing a small segment alongside the mahogany beading where I want the veneer. If you're working on some other abstract pattern, say a flower or a leaf, you'll be tracing that from your source, wherever that is. Now I'm just tracing one edge, and because I'm adding long thin strips, I do this in about 50 millimeter segments. That's about two inches for those of us not living in the modern age. I'm aiming for about two millimeters width, so I have a piece of wood that's about two millimeters thick. And I'm now working my way along, adding an adjacent line spaced the thickness of the wood from the original line. Again, if you're tracing an object, this step isn't required. You'll just be tracing your outline. When I'm done, I freehand smooth this into a line which is parallel with my original line. Now, get that mask in tape and very carefully stick a length of it across the width of your veneer. Be careful, once it's stuck down, you're not going to be able to get it off without damaging the veneer. So no bends or wrinkles. Line up your artwork on the tracing paper over the veneer so that you're using the veneer very efficiently. It's quite expensive, so you don't want to be wasting it. When you're positioned, slide in the carbon paper and trace the outline.
Now the shell is very fragile but pretty hard. Using the razor blade, score along the line you've traced. Press hard, but at this point I recommend you don't try and cut right through, otherwise you'll get cracking of the sheet. Aim to be cutting the masking tape and just score in the veneer underneath at first. Next, use your Stanley knife and with a new sharp blade, go along the score line that you've made already with the razor blade. The Stanley knife, being a lot thicker, will tend to act as a wedge and if you start at one end with firm pressure, you will hear the veneer cracking along the score as you go. Okay, so now you have the shape cut out. You might get some cracks along it, but don't worry, the masking tape is going to hold it all together. Now to fix the veneer to the wood. I've been doing this for a while and I'm not using any gloves at this stage, but you might want to if this is your first time. You really don't want a skin veneer on your project. I'm first piping a line of the thick superglue along where I want to place the veneer. Don't use the thin stuff, it'll just run away and make a terrible mess. Tear off a piece of cling wrap and place it ready. Next you're going to drop the veneer cutout and float it into place. The thick glue gives it some body to rest on so you don't have to work super fast but don't press it down hard or it will grab. Now I slide it into place using a variety of pointy things that might come to hand, in this case a small screwdriver and my knife. But choose a weapon of your choice to get the veneer positioned right where you want it. In this case I'm just very slightly overlapping the mahogany beading underneath so there is no lighter coloured maple exposed. When it feels like you're almost down and the glue is starting to grab, cover with the cling wrap and press down all over and hold firmly. As you squish the excess glue out, you can still make some small slide adjustments if you work fast, but be quick because it's going to set up pretty quickly. Hold for a few seconds then start to pull away the cling wrap. It should feel like it's stuck to the wood and the glue is set as you ease it off, but don't worry, the glue will not stick the film to the wood. Thicker areas of the glue may still be tacky, so with a brush, paint on some of the stinky accelerator all over the areas where the glue is. Within a second or two of applying the accelerator, the glue will be hardened and safe to handle. Now using the knife or your razor blade, gently peel away the masking tape. And there we have it, our first segment. Because you've used the accelerator, the super glue is hard already. You can scrape and sand away any excess glue, and in particular make sure there is none where the next segment is going to go. Otherwise it will lift it relative to the piece you've laid, and that would be a really bad thing. Alright, now you've got the hang of it, off we go. Now if you look at the sound hole, I've added the veneer in a sandwich between two strips of mahogany inlay. Whereas the outer edge, that's just one stripe. But I want that mahogany shell, mahogany sandwich look all over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a similar method to add a mahogany veneer strip alongside the shell veneer. To create a mahogany veneer, I'm planing continuous curls off of this block of mahogany. I've set the blade for about the same 0.15mm thickness as the veneer. Now I'm sticking the length of the masking tape down, sticky side up and I'm going to stretch out the curls onto the masking tape. This is coming in a bit thin, but it's okay. Next time I would aim to get closer to 0.15mm. I can fit two strips on this width of tape, then I cut it to about 6 inches in length. Okay, now gloves on, 
and out with the super glue again. I've wrapped some cling film around my finger because otherwise you use an awful lot of the latex gloves doing this. And the super glue does tend to stick a little bit more to the latex gloves than it does to cling film. So the gloves are like a secondary protection barrier in this case. Goop some thick glue on the surface and then spread it out over the length, just thick enough to cover the wood. Harden the glue with the accelerator, either by brush or by spray. Don't forget your mask. And there we are, strips of wood veneer ready to go. Now, this time, I'm not going to tediously trace the outline as before. Instead, I merely cut the wood veneer into a bunch of 2mm wide strips. The wood is flexible and pliable, so this time we can shape it as we go. A slightly different technique is now called for when we're putting this wood veneer down. First drop a small blob of the thick glue at the start, preferably where there isn't much of a curve. Then place the end of the strip in place, hold it down with the cling wrap and activate it with the accelerator so that you've got the first quarter of an inch or so glued down. Now, before you apply any more glue, gently ease the strip into shape going around the outline. As before, I would work in about two inch or 50 millimeter long segments or so. Unless there's a long straighter stretch, then maybe go to three or four inches. Now you've coaxed the wood into shape, pipe the glue in place and hold down the wood just like the shell veneer, sliding and pushing it into place as you go to make sure there are no gaps between the shell veneer and the wood veneer. But in this case, Butt the wood strip up against the shell, don't overlap it. You want these two veneers to stand about the same height above the surrounding wood. Don't worry about the glue going over the shell veneer or surrounding wood, but try to smooth it out thinly under the cling wrap. Activate the glue. Then remove the masking tape. Gently scrape away any excess glue down to the level of the shell with a razor blade. But go really careful here. Use the shell veneer to set the level and protect the wood veneer as you scrape. Carry on around in segments until you're done. If you do happen to scrape or sand through the wood veneer, then carefully cut either side of the damage with a razor and then scrape the wood veneer completely away. You can then patch in another segment. So here's what you have so far. Okay, now we're going to get to use a lot of the glue. Pipe and line of glue around the edges. And then with a blade, level it out. So that one end of the blade rests on the shell and the other end of the blade rests on the body wood. That way you fill in the void either side of the veneer. Work quickly in about six inch segments at a time. Then when you have glue all over, harden the glue with the pump aerosol. Once again, we're outside because of the fumes and I still have my mask on. I've wrapped a layer of cling film around my fingers and held it in place with a rubber band. And now I'm going to spread a thick layer all over the body. Don't go too crazy or it will run. And a layer of glue thicker than about one or two millimeters will take a little longer for the accelerator to harden the material all the way through. So best to do several coats. Spray all over the accelerator, making really sure every spot is sprayed. When you think you've got good coverage, it's time to get sanding. 
I'm using an orbital sander with 320 grit at this stage to flatten down the hills and valleys caused by my finger painting. You can see already that we've managed to get a pretty flat surface over most of the area. I still have a few low spots and areas that need to be filled, but rather than use the finger brush method this time, I'm going to use a sponge in a bag to spread the glue. This is better for getting a thinner, more uniform coat all over the surface. I use a combination of spreading and patting on the surface, which gives a coarse orange peel texture. Back to the sander again, and this time for the final finish. Now I'm being super careful to be sure all the surface is flat and level. As you can see, super glue sands really easily and doesn't clog. But again, keep a dust mask on. Work up through the grades until you get to a very fine grit. And then use super fine grade wire wool for the final finish. And a blade or scraper to get into the corners. The smoother the surface finish you get at this stage, the better the final lacquered finish will look. Okay, so here's all the component parts of my guitar. Now, while we've been laying the veneer on the surface of the body, you can still do a true inlay using the same shell veneer, as I have done on the neck here. Here I have machined out cavities and inlaid 1mm thick rectangular mahogany fret position markers into the fretboard leaving them about 0.25mm below the fretboard surface. I've added the shell veneer directly on top of the mahogany, which still leaves the surface of the shell markers below the level of the fretboard. I then build up the level with the superglue to above the surrounding fretboard surface. Finally, I went back to the compound radius fretboard jig and machined the fretboard down to the final level so that the surface is completely flat and smooth. Now to finish up, I'm spraying with nitrocellulose lacquer, which you can buy as deft in the US. I'm using a small airbrush sprayer here, with the lacquer thin 20%. Here's where being meticulous with the superglue finish prior to lacquering really pays off. Just one thin coat of lacquer and already the surface is looking pretty good. In all, I went on to apply four thin coats of lacquer with some fine sanding between the coats. Using the super glue as a base really cuts down on the total drying time, and as the total lacquer thickness itself is thinner than you would get by building up many coats, the resultant finish hardens much faster. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you can find some way of using these veneers in your next project. Till next time, I'm Drew, and thanks for watching. Hey,